Today's lesson is all about the short game. Three common mistakes I see from people when playing short game shots. We're gonna see how we fix them. Short game mistake number one, coming up, let's go. So mistake number one is pitching. One of the common faults I see comes from when we find ourselves with maybe a gap wedge in hand, uh, a lob wedge, and we're a little bit closer to the green as we would see here, maybe 30, 40, 50 yards but we actually stand to the golf ball as if we're about to hit a full shot. Now, from this position here, I could literally throw this ball underarm out to that flag, get it to land pretty close, and get up towards onto the green close to the flag because it doesn't take me a lot of power there. I don't really need to generate a massive amount of power to get to this flag. What I need to do is really be in control of the power I create so I can really get my distance down to a T. you know for for my level of play i would ideally like to hold this it might be that at your level of play yes we're looking to just get it on the green but we don't need the big setup so that's mistake number one when i see people actually get here i've got my 50 degree um, wedge out and i stand to it as if i'm about to make a full swing because once i've then taken my normal posture where I've got my feet nearly at shoulder width apart. I've got the correct tilt in my spine here. My brain almost says, right, well, I'm geared to now make this big swing as I'm going up. And that's where I see a lot of people fall into the trap of taking their normal setup, making a big swing here, and then thinking, oh gosh, I'm going to absolutely murder this over the back of the green. So I'll slow down on the way down and we end up getting this follow through that we've gone all the way back here and we get sort of 10% of a follow through as we're going back, which leads to shots just like this one where I would be up and then I'm stopping and getting that duffed shot because I'm trying to actually harness the power in that I've created in my backswing. So instead of making that mistake and thinking, well, I'm pitching, but I'm still going to use a full setup. Let's get into the proper setup and make sure then, like I say, we can regulate that power and get the ball close to the hole. So when we come to these shots that are round the green that are 50 yards and in, let's see that as we now approach it, we're not looking for that full setup. So from camera angle here, I won't be as tilted from my hips here. I won't see the normal tilt that I would get maybe with my seven iron. As I place the club in, it might actually be that the club is actually a little bit more upright. It's more upright in general anyway than a seven iron, but I might just raise the handle ever so slightly. So from there then, I would just be a little bit closer to the golf ball. And now you can see I'm a little bit more upright as opposed to being a little bit more bent down. From there then, with the canes that we've got out here, as you can see, I'm about a club head or two, one and a half to two club heads width apart either side from this cane here. So center line on my body here, I've got my feet equidistant from that line and seeing that they've not got this big wide stance. Again, I'm trying to control this power. I don't need loads of it. So make sure we get this slightly smaller setup. I'm a little bit more raised up. The ball position is just ever so slightly in front of my center. And then from there, I'm now going to lean 60% of my pressure into my lead foot. And then all I'm trying to do from there is make this smaller swing, feeling that my body, my torso, my hips, my arms and the club are rotating at the same speed. So I'm not making a big wind up and I just start to get a good pitch out. So set up here, that smaller width of stance, 60% of pressure into the front side, ball just in front, everything turning at the same time. And there, a nice little pitch off, just frying to the front of the green. And then I've now got a decent pitching setup. I'm not gonna be hitting those duff shots, especially on the half shot, because I'm able to control my power. Let's go and take a look at mistake number two and fix that one for you. So mistake number two, we found ourselves in the bunker and people probably fear the bunkers quite a lot because they are hard. We've got a face up here that I've got to get up over onto the green. Sometimes they can be 
quite high as we're getting up there we might be up against the face we might be at the back of the lip and they are treacherous little hazards but if we can do a couple of things right in these and stop making the mistakes that i commonly see we're going to again start saving shots what i see is two things happening almost the polar opposite of what i saw from the pitching there instead of making a good swing here now and actually committing to going through and making a full swing because when we're in a bunker we're not actually trying to hit the golf ball we're going to get a cloud of sand trapped between the face and the ball so the actual force that it comes out with is severely limited it's literally going to pop out as it comes out it's not as if that if i've got my 58 and i made that length of swing for me it goes 90 yards it's not going to go 90 yards. I'm not going to be swinging it as quickly, but also because of that big cloud, it's not going to go out there. It's just going to pop out. So when we are in a bunker, we've got to make sure that when we're in, we're committed to actually completing our backswing and completing the follow through to see that we generate enough force for when that sand does get trapped in between the ball and the club, it will pop out. Secondly, because of the lip over here that we can see, we almost think that I've got to help it out a little bit more. When you're in and you've selected that sand wedge or you've selected that lob wedge, that is enough loft to get you out. And if it's not, all we need to try and do is make sure we open the club face a little bit more up like so. So once I'm in then, instead of actually now making a long swing and then leaning back and bottoming out too early and catching too much sand and going up and maybe sculling it a bit like so and getting that shot where it doesn't come out of the bunker what we've got to commit to when we get in these bunkers now is making a good setup so always try and shuffle yourself in so you've got a good solid base then i want to try and keep 70 percent of my weight into this lead thigh because i'm going to try and go down underneath the ball and then swing into my full follow through with that little bit of speed i've got with the loft i've got that is going to be enough to get me out of this bunker so i've shuffled in i've found my spot i get that 70 percent into my lead side and then from here a committed swing staying in the lead side is going to get me out of this bunker and there just a little bit too much but i'm safely out as it's gone through and that's how we need to play our bunkers stop making short swings and being scared of hitting it get committed and go down under the sand and we'll get out of these bunkers let's go and take a look at the third and final short game mistake so the third and final short game mistake i want you guys to stop making out on the golf course is what i call the dtm you're doing too much and what I mean by that is, as we look from this angle here, I've not got that complicated of a shot. Yes, I'm in a little bit of semi-rough and I've got a little bit of a knoll to go over here. But as soon as I get to this point here, I'm now on the green and I've got a good 20 paces of green to work with. The problem that I see happening is that, like I say, we're DTM, we're doing too much we've got our most lofted club out now that wouldn't be an issue in ourselves. if you love chipping with your 60 and you're able to hit a high shot a low shot and a medium shot with it that's great get comfortable with one wedge it might be a 56 might be a 50 54 whatever it may be but stop doing too much we're trying to hit these big fancy shots and they just don't require it if i was stood here now and i had a ball in my hand and i was going to throw it i wouldn't try and slam dunk it because it's just too hard to try and do that so we would see something where we get a nice line we think oh there's a little bit of this knoll here so i'm gonna go all the way over it hit the high phil mickelson parachute shot and then as i go through i hit it nice and high looks really good and unfortunately it's not stopped and i've gone rolling off the other side of the green it was actually a pretty good strike but the chances of me stopping that quick enough there and getting the exact right yardages are going to be pretty hard so when you get to a situation where you're now just faced with a a, a chip shot there might be a obstacle in the way a bunker a grassy knoll whatever it may be but just think well 
how do I get this onto the green quickly and how do I get it rolling if I was going to hit the less stress shot instead of the doing too much I've got DTM and LSS beautiful beautiful acronyms how do I do that what do I do all I need to do here for me like I say about seven or eight paces out I find the start of the green here and another two or three I'm on a flat spot of the green so I just need to get it onto there I don't need to carry it that extra two-thirds of the way I just need to make sure I get it onto the green let momentum trickle it down to the hole and from there then it should be a shot that I've got more consistency with and it's not as high tolerance so when we play this one now Again, make sure that when we do come to actually take our address and everything, we're set up like we should be a little bit of a smaller stance and we're still making the turn and everything. But now all I'm going to look to do is just try and throw this a couple of yards onto the green and let the slopes of the green and the momentum of the ball just feed it down nice and stress-free. Pops it out, really nice little chip turn left a little bit for me and even that that's shooting away a little bit but I've now got about three foot from a par and it felt a lot easier than making that big long swing and trying to get my landing spot absolutely perfect try and make it as stress-free as possible don't be doing too much when you're playing these chips around the green don't be a hero just play it nice and simply Guys, I hope you've enjoyed that this week. Those are three short game mistakes I want you to stop making when you're out on the golf course. Give that a watch again. Share it with someone who struggles with it. Always remember, subscribe to the channel. I want you to get better at the game. You're going to do that by getting your free lessons here with me, Matt Fryer. Thanks for watching. See you in your next lesson.